Hello folks, it is Friday, I hope you're having a good one. It is time for some more Hobby Nightmares, and one Hobby Nightmare is being read about today. And it is a heavy one about an army that means a lot to somebody going missing in the worst possible way. Now, I've been holding on to this Hobby Nightmare for, well, a, a few days now. So... I thought I should do it before Christmas to give this person a, a, a bit of uh, closure, maybe. Let's go over it. It is a bit of a heavy subject, so if you're heading into the weekend and you don't want any sort of... Uh, um, not, a, not a downer, I don't think it's a, it's a downer, but it is a very, a very volatile subject. So if you're not up for that today, then fair enough. Move on. Move on with your day and go and have some fun somewhere else. If you're like me, though, and when you're in a good mood... That's the time to have things like this that you can actually think about and put energy into. Then come along with me as we dive into this uh, most strenuous of hobby nightmares. Uh, please bear with me. I will not be speaking very loudly or, or for too long because I have uh, my wisdom tooth is still there. It's still giving me a lot of pain. So hopefully that will be going in the next few days. It's really starting to get up my nose now. Um... Yeah, let's move on, shall we? And yes, somebody said to me before, you're getting wisdom teeth in your mid-30s? Yes. Um, weirdly, yes, I, I do. But I'm not the only one. A bunch of my friends have had that as well. Very strange. Anyway, if you've got any hobby nightmares, send them in to hobbynightmares at gmail.com and please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And yeah, because it will really help me get towards my 16,000 target. We are about 90 away now, so if you could help me do that, if you're new around here, then please do. It would mean a lot to me. Dion says, Hey North, call me Dion. I want to first take this opportunity to thank you for what you do for the hobby community. You're the sort of positive male influence that many of us need. The sort I wish I had known about whilst I was still a young lad, with my head firmly buried in my own behind. I will refrain from cursing for at least a few lines. Thank you very much, yeah. While I am relatively new to your hobby, I have found valuable insight into the lessons you offer. You're doing the Lord's work, truly. My hobby nightmare is a tale of love and of loss. Of friends, failed support systems, and a self-deletion. A tale of overinvestment and betrayal. This is the story of how my ex-wife melted my dead friend's army to slag for being a stupid, petty so-and-so. I'll offer you a sip of tea here before I get into things properly. I'll take that sip of tea later on. I started the hobby not wanting anything to do with the game except for painting. I was a closet nerd wearing a football jersey. American football, I come from Alaska. I grew up rough and only got tougher going into young adulthood. I was the all-star lineman of the school. I competed in wrestling, boxing, and mixed martial arts competitions. I was training from a very young age for military service. As being from a poor family, I knew the only way I'd get an education was through, was through scholarships or military programs post-service. I had a reputation as a tough SOB, and didn't want silly plastic toys to ruin that image. Fair enough. I will overlook that insult. The, the other outward perception of myself that I maintained is that I was a bastion of safety for the nerds at my school. I had to deal with a lot of violent abuse between my different homes growing up. My parents split when I was a baby. I was the child and they had to save their relationship. And we all know that always goes super well. I would burn off the anger that would build up from the abuse I regularly received from both my father and stepfather by fighting town bullies. This led to me having a lot of very nerdy friends, which honestly was a blast. I love all those guys and can't thank them enough for what they taught me through computers and gaming. They planted the early seeds that became my profession of choice. It was my junior year of high school when John asked for a ride to a shop I'd never heard of before. I'm assuming John is one of your nerdy friends. Cool. In our small town, and it being located just two miles from my dad's house, I found this quite shocking. I soon discovered that it was a hole in the wall, a nerd store for tabletop wargaming, and not a games workshop store. I was familiar with Magic the Gathering by this point, 
and this store carried no cards. It was the strangest thing I'd seen at this point, and wrapping my head around an army of soldiers game in space, played with plastic men, was a new one for me. The store worker was trying to explain the different factions and how the Imperium actually works, and I stared at him as if he had three heads. I think I said something along the lines of, so, the god of man, who is not a god, is actually just a massive psychic bedridden scientist with a bunch of angry and now mostly dead or missing giant super children? John and the worker burst out laughing and said, uh, Yeah, pretty much. You're a law pro already, dude. John was very excited to show me the wall of models, and the more he talked about the universe, the more confused I got. That's when I saw a bunch of Necron Immortals, and it was a straight-up blast from the past. I've seen these guys before. In middle school, I'd seen one of my classmates bringing in a fully painted Necron army with thematic terrain for show and tell. I remembered being so impressed by the paintwork at the time. I turned to the employee, and I asked if people are supposed to paint these. He said that most people do, but it's kind of all up to the player in general. He was kind enough to show me the Chaos Space Marines he had been assembling shortly before we got there. He gave us a demo on how to build, prep and clean the models, and then offered to let us come back next time he worked for a painting demo. I was so excited about the painting that I immediately dove into wanting to learn more about the factions. I wanted to buy all the colours to make them mine, but also be true to the universe. John was an, imp was an Imperial Guard player. As uh, he suggested, I look at factions outside the Imperium, so we had reasons to fight in the game. At this point, playing still held little interest to me, but seeing John's face was enough to convince me to be his bad guy. You're a good man. You're a good man. I'm just going to say that before we go anywhere. That, that's a good thing to do for a friend. I watched probably six hours of lore videos that night on all different marine chapters and their primarchs and notable histories. Necrons were super cool, but my other friend already played them. If we invited him to our group, it may not be fun of, uh, for the two of us using the same faction. I loved the sound of orcs, as their antics made me laugh the hardest, and I loved the story of Conrad Kurz. I resolved to sleep at uh, probably 2 or 3 a.m., thinking about what faction would suit me more. The misunderstood Night Haunter, the violent vigilante of the Primarchs, Maybe the Great War and its mighty unstoppable green tide. That is dangerous. A dangerous game to go to sleep on. Because you're not going to sleep. I've done that many times with 40k. When we returned to the same store a few days later, I checked the shelves and they were freshly sold out of orcs. So, the choice was made. I was to be a Chaos player. The only kits that displayed claws were the Terminator kit and the Warp Talons. I only had the funds for one box and paints. John had the glue and the assembly tools. So, I purchased my warp talons and the colours I needed for a proper Night Lord's Force. Painting with the lads was an incredible social experience. I was a bit disheartened at the end of the day when I had gotten one model done to a proper base coat and maybe slapped blue paint over the others. I was shocked to see how much time, effort and concentration went into each model. When I dropped John off, he asked me if I wanted to come in and paint at his house the next day, and I agreed that after practice, I would have to head there and paint. When that time came, his mother wasn't super thrilled about the sweaty, stinky, mud-covered athlete sitting in her kitchen painting plastic soldiers, but she was happy to see John so excited and to have had a friend that shared his goofy excitement. This didn't stop her from making a rule about how I needed to shower before we could paint in the future, but it did give us enough leeway for me to convince her to let me leave a few changes of clothes there so I could shower at their place after practice. This pattern became a regular routine. We got a small table with a big light in the middle and so we could both have proper lighting. Winter was setting in and natural light was a precious and limited resource. This was essential to our success. It took us months of work but we both eventually had 2,000 points painted, lists each. We wanted to have a significant battle for both of us to play our first time together. As a veteran player now, I think this was a little bit silly, 
but I wouldn't trade the time uh, at the painting table for anything, especially since my John with uh, my time with John was unfortunately quite limited. Please have a sip of tea. All right, I will. Mm -hmm. Ah, lovely. Continuing on. For those that don't know, Alaska is ranked number five for teen suicides in the U.S. I attribute this to the difficult living conditions, poor weather, and constant darkness in the winters. John was the frail sort, we did not, who did not have a dad in the picture. He had been killed in a fishing boat accident just a few years prior to his meeting. I never met his dad, of course, and John revered the guy. I can only imagine the stress of losing a parent puts on one's soul. He was one of my three closest friends who had lost a parent. Death, unfortunately, wasn't too uncommon for us up there in Alaska. I was away for the summer visiting my, my mother in the lower 48. I guess lower 48 means the states below you in the US, right? Okay. And my stepdad was especially ruthless that year. I think it was because my older brother had turned 18 and stayed in Alaska that year. I was alone against him. My stepfather was a fucking deadbeat pile of shit. My mum worked three jobs to support his freelance music producer lifestyle, unquote unquote, of sitting around in basketball shorts whilst abusing her children and keeping her too exhausted to do anything about him or his behaviours. This summer he decided to ground me for a month and that entailed locking me in a basement without my phone or any digital entertainment. He would come down and hold my hands above my head and punch my ribs repeatedly. If I protested, he wouldn't give me the food he had brought down. I guess this eventually wasn't enough for his sick pleasure because he also took away my light bulbs and bed. I was given a cheap military cot from the army surplus store. When I was allowed to leave the basement, I went and got a sleeping bag and couch cushions from a second-hand store. I used these to make myself a mattress. When he saw my mattress, he beat me for not appreciating, and I quote, the accommodations I've been graciously provided, and as punishment, he made me fill my room with bricks. Yes, fucking bricks. Roughly 600 of them. This would be about £2,700 worth. I still don't know how my mother allowed this, this was the summer I decided I was done with their home and family for as long as my stepdad remained in the picture. I slept in my brick-filled room on my cot with a makeshift mattress, counting the days until I'd return home. And could resume my new love for painting models. Yeah, your mum was also part of the abuse, dude. I say this a lot to guys who, who don't blame the mums because you're all good boys. Um, but I have to say, it, it, that is true. Uh, she is part of that abuse, man. Sorry to say. Uh, I don't care what, what job she has. If she's seeing her son treated like that, she does nothing about it. She's an abuser too. And uh, you can't let him get away with it, dude. I, 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 I wouldn't. You know? Absolutely not. I'd at least want some answers. You know? Are you really that weak that you had to, like, you know, have this guy around who's a drain on your resources and beat me all the time? Really? That's not something I could really forgive if it was my mother. Anyway. When I got my phone back at the end of summer, I had a ton of missed messages and calls from all sorts of people. But I had an especially high number from John. The messages were mostly asking for advice on how to defend himself. He told me about Duke, a local bully who was giving him trouble since I, I wasn't there to protect him. Near the end of his messages, they talked about how I had abandoned him and thought I was too good for my friends and only cared about my family down there in the US. I replied and explained what was happening in my life, but I never got a response. On the plane ride home, I knew life wasn't right. I didn't know what awaited me, but I knew it just felt off. Nobody would tell me why John wouldn't reply. After landing and getting my truck from, from, my, from my dad's, the first place I went to was his house. Slight interlude. I haven't cried about, uh, about this in a while, but thinking about this and writing about it brought fresh water to my eyes. Friends, it's okay to feel hurt and let it be sad. 
even years after you've adjusted. If you need to cry with somebody, I suggest a therapist or one of your boys. Do not cry in front of a woman, especially if you are interested in her romantically. Women will tell you they want a sensitive man, but if you cry in front of your woman, she will lose respect for you. Take a sip. This gets worse for a little bit. Okay. I'm just gonna um, go in on that. Yeah, uh, I, kn I know... Here's the thing, man. I know women that are like that, but I also know women who aren't like that. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you need to cry once every couple of years in front of your woman because something really bad's happened, that's grand. Do you know what I mean? She'll probably actually respect you for that. They'll be like, that's a, that's a really cool thing. A guy who cries every couple of months, yeah, she's going to lose respect for you. Eventually. She, yeah, that's going to grate, and she's going to lose respect for you. I mean, let's be honest. If I had, if I was with a woman and she cried that much, I'd be like, dude, get, fucking get a grip. Do you know what I mean? Like, how... Uh, what Did you get the wrong coffee from Starbucks? What's wrong with you? Like, you know, after a few months of that... No, no. No, no, no. So I think you, you are right in what you're saying, but... You take it a bit too far, you know what I mean? I think if, if you're, one of your parents dies and you have a little cry to yourself, uh, and, she, and she catches you, or you do it when she's there, you just break down, that's fine, you know what I mean? She's your wife, or, or your long-term partner, she's going to be fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, a man who cries every couple of months, every, once every six months, that's a bit much. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about, you know, when you should be crying as a dude in front of your woman, you know, and it's not toxic. People say that all the time, like, oh, that's so toxic. No, it's not. No, it's not. Be, uh, be stoic, handle your shit, right? Have coping mechanisms, and be there for the people around you. In other words, be a fucking man, all right? Be there for the people around you, make sure they're okay, be a rock for them. And then, when you need to, go to your bros... Right? Go to your support network, go to your bros, go to your therapist, or go to a room on your own and have a little cry and sort yourself out. Right? Cry it out, no problem. But don't do it in front of them. Right? If, if you, you, you can't sit there and complain about men not being treated as leaders and, and men not being treated as, as the man in the house anymore and then go and do shit like that. You want to be the man, that's what it entails. You know, feel all the shit you want to, just don't show it to them. Alright? You've got to be the hero. You've got to be the guy. Right? King of the castle, right? That's you. you. You're at the front, protecting everybody. Right? When that burglar comes in through the window, what are you going to do? Start crying? No. Right? Again. Treat every single threat to your family's happiness as a burglar. Stand in front of it, tell it to piss off, or you're going to break its neck. That's what you do. Right? And then if you need to, go and have a little moment to yourself, go for a drink with your bros, hug it out, have a bit of a cry, not a problem whatsoever. That's completely healthy. You know what I mean? That's what we're there for, for each other. We should be, at least. All right? But uh, that's what I mean. When, when people say women will lose respect for you, we're not saying that in a, in a judgy way against women. That's not what we're saying. That, that's a natural reaction. For her to be alarmed by a man who's crying all the time, that's a natural reaction. Because um, you're not supposed to. All right? There's certain things that you're just not supposed to do. That's one of them. Alright, just man your shit up. I, I very rarely say that. You know me. I'm very soft. I'm very much on, on, on your side. But sometimes you need a bit of tough love. And so he's right in some in some guys here. He, he is correct. But um, once once every couple of years, man. Or once, once every... Do you know what I mean? When something serious happens, cry in front of your wife. No problem. You know what I mean? No problem. Anyway, his lawn was unmowed. His windows were all shuttered. The aura about the place was very somber. It was very unusual for John's place. I knocked on the door and nobody answered. I heard the TV going and just kept knocking. Eventually, I heard something hit the floor and angry cursing before somebody stumbled to the door. It was his mother. Unkempt, drunk, and red-eyed. She saw me and her face was a mix of shock and anger. I was very confused and just asked if I could come in and talk with John or if she knew where I could find him. She went into a thousand-yard stare and said, 
I can take you to him, but you're gonna have to drive. She proceeded to direct me, unsurprisingly, to the cemetery. Her eyes held fury the whole drive. She led me to a freshly uh, dug grave. He didn't even have a gravestone yet. She explained that in his note, he felt abandoned by his best friend when he couldn't reach me. With no protection and no guidance, no father to rely on, he chose to take his own life. She asked me what was so important that you couldn't text back. I was in, ex in hysterics and explained the summer I just had, showing the bruises I had on my ribs. We just held each other in the cemetery and bawled our eyes out. I could feel her broken heart beat against my chest when we hugged. It was horrible. Dude. Um, I'm really sorry you had to go through that. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but at least she did the right thing as well. You know, I mean, she was angry at first, but as soon as you explained, she's fine. You know, I mean, like that, that's fine. Um, you know, absolutely. One thing I will say, though, for a carry-on, is... Um, if you ever thought about it, as in taking your own life, stories like this should really be a, a, a shot on the arm to you. Because look at the fucking devastation you leave behind. Do you know what I mean? This guy is going to have to live with this for the rest of his days. Imagine writing that in your suicide note. You blame somebody else. Do you know what I mean? Imagine doing that to somebody that you supposedly love and like. I know you're not thinking properly, but you know, at that stage, you know, you, you, you may be too far gone, but fuck me, dude. Imagine doing that to somebody. Sp your supposed friend, and you're there literally saying, yeah, I'm going to, ma to, to make the most selfish decision ever made, ever, right? Not only that, I'm going to blame you, so you get to, you get to hold the bag, you get to have all of the trauma, and I'm going to check out now, alright, peace, bye, right, and, you, and you go and, and, you know what I mean? No, no, that, you know, if, if you, if you, please don't do it. Whenever you, whenever you have that feeling, just don't, don't look at the devastation you leave behind. Okay. The world is a poorer place without you in it. There are people out there who care about you. I've had people like message me before and I've conversed with them back and forth through this channel and they've gone on to take their own lives, Right. Um, and if I need to fucking guilt you into not doing anything to yourself, then I'm going to do it. Don't. Because the people around you don't deserve to be holding the bag, for the most part. There'll be exceptions. There'll be people with absolutely terrible lives, sure, that need them to improve. Sure, I get that, but they are in the vast minority. Nearly everybody who ever takes their own life has people around them who will miss them dearly. And will be devastated by the loss. Especially if you're low enough. And I'm going to use that word. Low enough. To blame them before you go. That's some low shit right there. That is that is some juvenile. Juvenile shit. That your last act in this world. Is to put all of your burdens. And the mental anguish of your passing. Onto somebody else. That you supposedly love very much. That's your last act. Yeah, yeah. Only only being around suicide this much has given me that perspective. I used to always have utmost empathy for anybody who made that ultimate decision. Now I I still do, but there are certain actions that people do in those situations that just make me go, no, dude, no, absolutely not. That 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 that's not that's not that shouldn't be your last act, in, in on the mortal coil, you know. Um. So I'm really sorry you had to go through it, man. That sucks so much. Um, you know, at least you were there for each other. I, I get that. And that hopefully his mum absolved you. But let's read on and see if that happens. Uh, when I dropped her off, she asked me to wait a second before I drove away. She came out about 10 minutes later with a big cardboard box. It was pictures of us and his guard army. There were several new units and vehicles in progress. I knew his colour scheme and personal army lore. It was with rever reverence that I finished his army for him. That was the only army I played all year. 
He was the player, I was just the painter. But that army really taught me to be a general. The store employees had no idea of John's passing. We put up a memorial picture on one of his Bane blades in the display case, and I quickly became known as a ruthless guard playing killing machine. It wasn't until years later that I reflected on his list building capabilities and truly admired how many tools he had worked into his army. Well, there you go. This is when things got more serious with a cute girl from school. She had just lost her mother that summer to alcohol when she drunkenly passed out face down in a ditch and drowned. We met in the trauma counsellor's office. She was there voluntarily. Red flag. I'm sorry, man, but that is a red flag. Meeting a girl in a, in a trauma counsellor's office. Codependency is going to be a big thing there. That's going to be a toxic relationship eventually. I was sent there by force after removing three teeth from Duke's mouth in the school weight room. Turns out, a big fellow can swing a 45-pound plate really fucking hard. I slapped him with the broad side of it to do less damage, but I guess a soft, uh, a soft bitch you praise on the weak had equally soft gums. I pocketed and kept one of those teeth. Jesus Christ, dude. And I, 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 I can't say you're wrong for doing what you did, but Jesus Christ. Uh, but back to the girl. They think bad boys are hot, I guess. So watching three officers escort a big footballer to the office left an impression. As I kept visiting the counsellor, she eventually started talking to me in the office lobby as she waited for her turn. We shared a lot of similar music and art tastes. She very quickly wanted me to do everything. Or she wanted ev to do everything with me. Sorry, she very quickly wanted to do everything with me. I'd come out of my truck after school, and she'd be sitting on the bed asking where we were going. I got the I got the attention from the basic bimbo ass bitches in my school, but the artsy music kids typically didn't uh, glom onto me so forwardly. This hot punk girl who would rip on a viola. I don't know what that means. With it was a breath of fresh air to me. I definitely fell into more of a punk slash metal scene myself at that stage. My experiences had left me jaded, and my new forms of expression reflected that. We talked about John, but I hadn't told her about our bonding over Warhammer. I was scared I'd spook the girl, and she would think I was lame. Dude, she liked you after you removed three guy three teeth from a guy using a barbell. I think she's going to be okay with you playing little plastic toy soldiers. Outside of playing guard, I kind of fell out of the hobby. I didn't buy new models for either army. I had finished my night laws before the summer, and after I'd finished the guard, I saw no point in making a new pile of grey. I slaughtered on the, on the football field my senior year, earning my scholarship, and then declined to take it. It just didn't feel right. I stayed with this girl all my senior year, and only broke things off because I was leaving for the state after graduation. I moved to Utah, literally because I threw a dart at a US map and moved where it landed. Dude, I, I love these hobby nightmares where you're thinking, this is a well-adjusted guy, this is all fine, you know, uh, I wonder what's going to happen. And then they do certain behaviours like this, you know, like they're removing three teeth from that guy, you know throwing a dart at a map and just going where it says dude you were lost this is a lost young man right here this is the most dangerous form of human on the planet all right a young man who is well built knows how to handle himself good at fighting with no purpose this is the most dangerous thing in the world and we are rapidly creating it at a breakneck pace there are more men like this in the world than ever before all right, and for the most part, it's not their fucking fault either. Anyway, carrying on, the place is okay, but the coffee back then especially sucked. It went. It's against their religion, and coffee shops just weren't a thing there yet. Yeah, mostly Mormons, right? I needed a new social group, and found myself walking by a games workshop at the district, outdoor mall complex thing. I had no idea that the literal company that made these models had their own stores. This was during 7th edition, and flyers 
with um, with a current hotness. Oh, I remember that. I hated it. Orcs were in full stock. I had never seen so many orc models in one place. It was irresponsible, but I spent a third of the money I had set aside as a deposit for an apartment on orcs. I dropped it on two trucks, two jets, a box of boys, paints, and some other stuff I can't recall. I believe Fantasy Battle was also discontinued around this time, because that's when I met a dude in a different mall, parking lot, selling Fantasy Boys out of a five-gallon tub Home Depot bucket for one pound for a boy. I took the lot. One pound, one dollar, sorry. I took the lot. I made friends with the dishwasher at work, and we both were looking for a place to go. So, we got an apartment together, and things were starting to feel manageable for me. My high school girlfriend called me on Skype to say she was over Alaska. That ever since I had left, there was no joy in our, in our old town. I told myself, you know what? Screw it. This is my place. I'll invite her to come here. Oh, no. And extended the offer to help her move in with me. Obviously, I cleared this with my new roommate and the rental office. My roomie was thrilled that rent was getting cheaper for him. I wanted to split it three ways instead of trying to get her to pay half of my room and splitting rent via room. When she moved in with me, she discovered the orcs that I'd been converting from fantasy to 40k. And instead of judging me, she thought it was so cool and creative that I was sculpting and modelling these, just to bring them to life with a brush. I showed her my collection with the other armies. I can't remember if I explained their history or importance to me, but I kept them in a nice case away from danger, so I think she got the idea that they were very important to me. Let's take a moment to breathe. I am untensing my shoulders writing this. This is a good tea break as we take a moment of respite before the next section of Everything Goes Terribly Wrong. Thanks for bearing with the long story. The context is important, but things in my life actually start to go pretty smooth for a bit, so we will fast forward to some key points and get into the nightmare as we catch up to it. All right. I learned about tax certificates and started to study them in my personal time. Both myself and my girlfriend were promoted to positions of management in our respective jobs. I got my roomie off the dishes and got him into a shift lead spot with a raise to match. We moved into a bigger apartment and had some disposable income. We agreed that part of our new funds would start going to a wedding fund and the rest we could use to play. I built a Chaos Demons of Zinch army for her to play. She loved the Pink Horrors and the Bird Lord. The paint scheme matched my Night Lords to a degree. This was so we could play teams at the store. She tried to get into painting with me, but resolved it just wasn't for her. That's fair enough. And I was secretly relieved because that was my personal time anyway. I finished several of the certificates I'd been studying for and accepted a pretty decently paying job. We got married and moved to Texas so I could pursue better work. Life out there wasn't as nice as SLC, but the money and coffee were much better. I found a job with Samsung in Austin and started bringing home a, com a comfortable wage. My wife only worked because she liked the bakery she had found down there. I was happy to see her make friends as I was always so busy with my new position. I know I've heard you talk about this, but be very selective and firm in your choice of your wife's friends. If she makes friends with stupid assholes, they will eventually convince your woman to be stupid with them. And this is where we step back into the nightmare elements of the hobby. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and well, I'm going to take a quick uh, sip of my tea. And maybe YouTube might want to put an advert right here. Let's see, shall we? One sec. Alrighty. Hopefully they put an advert there. We'll see if they did. If they didn't, no problem. Uh, from what you said there, I agree. I agree, but it reads like... It always reads uh, when I when I read this or when I say it that I, I want to control my wife's life or my woman's life. I, that's not right at all, right? Um, if she's got friends that are going to tank your relationship, then either I have to leave so I'm not miserable and you don't do something that's going to break my heart, right? Or they've got to go. 
that's literally it. Okay? That's literally it. You've got to be able to respect yourself as a man. If you respect yourself and your own time and your own heart and your own choices, when you start getting... Sorry, I'm getting messages from a friend here. Uh, when you start getting, um, shall we say, warning signs, you know, like your wife's friends always wanted to go out to a club or they always want to introduce them to, to other male friends that they've got. Shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, that's when you should really, 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 maybe, maybe start to have a word with her about what's appropriate to do and what isn't. Um, the amount of relationships I've seen tank because the, the wife or the girlfriend has either gotten involved with friends, new friends, who are pretty toxic and want us to do stupid shit, or she's already got friends who get jealous of her being in a long-term relationship and they decide to go and mess around with it. Innumerable emails. Ridiculous amount. Even friends as well. Ridiculous amount of them who've been in that situation. Um, don't put up with it. Leave. Ultimatum straight away. Them or me. Them or me. You know? Anyway. <clears throat> I'd gotten into tournament play and had a budget to travel with now. We were getting into being established adults. To where we were starting to consider a house and family. Or at least I was. For the hobby, I had two tournament lists, Necrons and Tau. At home, I now had the offer... Uh, sorry. At home, I now had the other four more casual armies. And these were the lists I'd play at home or at the friendly local game store. I want to say this was about 2019. Life was feeling good. And that's always when God wants to send up a wake-up call. Her dad got sick. And he needed some pretty major surgery. I knew he made decent money and had good insurance. But I also know it put a significant burden on him. And he was starting to struggle with providing for her younger brothers. And to me with her as my wife. They were my brothers too. It was my responsibility to help. I reached out to her dad in private. And offered to start covering his medical bills. So his income could continue being used to support their household. To do this, I needed to take on extra hours. So I did just that. I did tell my wife what the overtime was about. She was very thankful for me for helping out her family. However, I was naive to the insidious nature of her friends. As I was gone a lot, she would come home bored and they started inviting her to bars out with them. Here we go. Women who look often turn into women who touch i didn't say that he did women who looked off who look often turn into women who touch if a woman who dresses provocatively tells you it's for me i wear what i want because i like it the truth is she wears it for attention it's the attention that she likes and attention is what my wife got while i was away supporting her father and making sure that she could feed her brothers she started to resent I was always working, and in my mind, it was all for her. A small bump in the road until her dad wasn't drowning in medical bills. Then we could get back on track and buy our house and start a family. In her eyes, I'd basically abandoned her in an unfamiliar city. Always so tired when I returned home, I didn't have the energy for anything. And when I did, it was to cook us something or to get some painting in. We never got to do anything fun or exotic, she would say. She would tell me about these bars she'd been going to. We went one time and I was flabbergasted at the prices of drinks. She just said, oh, I don't look. I, I either just order or people buy them for me. Red flag. Dude, that's, the red flag came and went a page ago. Right? This is what you get for, for not having the balls to sit down and say look what i'm doing for your family all of this is for you and your brothers so your dad isn't buried under debt you're not gonna go to those bars you're not gonna go out with these fucking jezebels all right you either stop doing that or i stop the work i stop this relationship and i stop paying your dad's bills one of the two 
You have fucking respect for me. Listen, guys, I'm in a I'm I, as a man, I'm in a relationship right now. Okay, I would not go out with the lads on the pull, even if I had no intention of pulling anybody. I would not go out to a club with the lads on my own. Absolutely not. Do you know why? It's a lack of respect. I know I'm not going to do anything. It's still a lack of respect for the woman that I'm with. It shows a complete lack of respect for boundaries and where we are. Because the only reason you go to a club is to be seen and to be looked at because you're on the market. If you still want to act like you're on the market, then be on the fucking market. Alright? But don't try and have one foot on one side of the fence and one foot on the other and tell me that's not what you're doing. I have fucking eyes, alright? I don't go out with the lads. I go out with her, right? And my friends. We all go out together and have a really good time. Okay? And if I do go out with the lads, I go out to a, to a, a local pub or somewhere where we're not going to, you know, be trying to be around women all the time. I will go to a pub or, or, or a, or a um, hobby store or whatever. Something like that. Nice quiet evening. No problem. Right? Because I'm in a, a committed relationship. This is what you do. Okay? You can't act like a single person when you're in a relationship. It's not healthy. And eventually, the toxicity will destroy what you've built with your partner. Alright? Plan and act for success. Don't try and throw wrenches in your own relationship. And if your woman does shit like this, give it that ultimatum. If you want to be single, my darling, go and be single. I, I, I give you my permission. Go and be single. I'm giving you an option here. I'm giving you all the options in the world, right? The option to stay with me means you don't do Jezebel shit like that. Okay? You're not 21 anymore. You're here with me. You're with me. You either be in this relationship or you go out with your friends and you show your tits off to strangers. But you don't do both. Right? I have too much respect for myself to, to let you do that. And by the way, I wouldn't do it to you. I wouldn't do it to you. It's always got to be fair, guys. Don't go out with the lads and try and pull on or even... Don't even go out to lads to, to a club when, with no intention of pulling because you know you're, you know you're not going to. Don't don't do it. Don't do a double standard. Hold yourself. Be more stoic. Rely on yourself. Go and do some reading. Go work out on the gym. Go work on yourself. If you're in a serious committed relationship, put that part of your life to one side. I don't need to go to the clubs anymore. I don't need to be around around loose women anymore. I don't. I'm not single. I'm not on the market. And if I am missing it that much, maybe I should be single for a little bit more. Right? Be honest with yourself and be honest with your partner. But don't let her do shit like this. Hold her to the same standards you hold yourself to. And if she tells you, I don't care, you can go out and do whatever the hell you want. Break up with her. Immediately. If she says to you, you can go out and do whatever you want, and, and like, I trust you, you can go out. Say, listen, we're done. We're done. Because we don't have the same standards for this relationship. I have more respect for this relationship than you do. So, we're done. We're completely done. I, I'm not doing this. Right? Walk away. Walk away. There's nothing saying you can't go out with the lads. Just go out to a pub or a hobby store or, or whatever, dude. Go and have fun. Go do something else. But you don't need to be going clubbing. You don't need to be going ch looking like you're chasing skirt. Don't do that when you're with a woman that you love. Don't do it. And she shouldn't do it to you either. And if she's okay with you doing that, and she wants to go and do it herself, she wants to be single, let her go be single. Leave. Alright? This is what you get. I'm going to read on here, but bear in mind, things are going to go very wrong for this guy. Things are going to go very wrong, and to a certain extent... It's his own fault. Alright? Alright. She said her friends were getting her the drinks when I pressed that statement. I didn't want to accuse her of being unfaithful while we were trying to have a nice night doing something exotic, quote-unquote. But the seed of doubt had been planted, 
and it made the other signs so much more glaring. As it turns out, she was being unfaithful, and had been for a little bit. She took my absence in work as an opportunity to explore the sexual marketplace she missed, quote-unquote, by getting married to too young. A concept planted by her friends, it was revealed later on. She wouldn't come clean about it until I pressed her with hard evidence. I set innocuous traps, things she wouldn't move but a curious dude would pick up and put down wrong. I put up discreet cameras to watch the entrance of the apartment. I had friends she didn't know from my work go to these bars when she would when she would have her girls' nights. I collected video and photo evidence. Her phone was under my plan, so I pulled texts from it. When confronted about it, she went ballistic. I gave her an ultimatum. Cut the shit, quit her job, and block the deadbeat friends she worked with. Good lad, or we are over. Good lad. Good lad. She responded by asking if we could have an open relationship. Then, okay, you've got your answer. You've got your answer. See ya. See ya. Right? She responded by asking if we could have an open relationship. Here you go, Jezebel. There's the fucking door. Don't let it slap you in the fat ass on the way out. All right. Done. Goodbye. Off you go. The sea is that way. Go and drown yourself in it. Off you go. I stared in silent disbelief for what felt like an eternity. And then handed her the divorce papers. Yes! <laughs> yes! I, sta I stared in silent disbelief for what felt like an eternity. And then handed her the divorce papers I drafted and stashed in my guard codex on the shelf. That's your friend reaching out, my, my dude. He's reaching out. I'm telling you now. I picked the codex because it felt like John had, had the support behind me on my choice. Yeah, man. Fucking, fucking right. Send her back to the fucking streets. I told her to think hard about it. As my mind was 87% made. <laughs> fucking hell, that's... Alright, that's specific. I left to go for a drive and to call her dad to bring him up to speed on the situation. When I got home, she wasn't there. I texted my friend to see if he wanted to catch a game that evening at his house so I could have a beer and talk through my thoughts. I went to the closest to grab my mod I went to the closet, sorry, to grab my models, and three boxes were missing. Night Lords, Zinch Demons, and Imperial Guard. I called my wife, and it went straight to voicemail. I knew she was up to some stupid shit, probably at the recommendation of Queen Bitch, the ringleader of a stupid little circle of friends, and I knew where this bitch lived. I drove there while white-knuckled. Sure as shit, I can see her car in the driveway. I go to knock and hear a, fi a fire in the backyard. Not like a campfire, but gas fueled forge type. There's popping sounds and laughter. So I head straight to the back. As I open the gate, I see my wife and Queen Bitch standing over a gas fueled fire under a clay bowl. And they are in the process of melting my models. Two plastic piles are on the ground, and they are actively melting John's Imperial Guard. Uh, trigger warning, guys. I have read. I was asked to read this specific paragraph before I read anything else of the story. So, trigger warning. There is violence coming. All right. Cool. I'd love to say I kept my cool, but I did not. I think they could tell they were fucked when they saw my face lit by that fire in the dark. I can only imagine that the hatred in my eyes matched the anger John's mother stared into me when I wasn't there for him. I can't even say I wasn't conscious of the violence I was about to inflict on Queen Bitch. I never touched my wife in this rage. But her friend got 140% of the shit she deserved for all the shit she had done to my life. It was the first and only time I ever hit a woman. And I hit her hard. I'd never realised how much softer girls are than men. My first punch was an uppercut to the gut that lifted her off the ground. I caught her by the foot by the throat and threw her, grabbed the hot claw bowl and smashed it into her as she stood up. 
I burnt my hand pretty bad. And the molten guard poured down her body, causing much worse burns than I'd received onto her hands. I put out the fire quickly and treated her burns before mine. I ordered my wife to call the cops on myself and waited there for them. I texted my lawyer and told him the situation and said when I got out I'm pressing charges on the both of them. The cops took me to spend a few days in lockup to cool down, which wasn't very nice. Queen Bitch obviously wanted to press charges. After presenting all the texts she had goaded my wife with, and also pulling the messages proving it was her idea to melt my minis, during the court proceedings I was given community service and probation. I then turned around and sued both her and my wife for $15,000 US dollars each, and I won both lawsuits. Uh, that's cool, but you do now have a criminal record, which is terrible. Terrible. Um, so I'm going to say here, I don't condone this at all. Um, this is a guy who's lost everything and has been pushed to the absolute... Well, beyond the brink, he snapped. Completely snapped. And, um, yeah, I don't condone it, but I can't blame you, but I don't condone it. You, know, you didn't do the right thing, but I think you know that as well. I think you know that you, you, you fucked up here. You know what I mean? Um, I've heard this as well from dudes. A lot of bar talk. You know what I mean? When we used to work in bars and things. Um, about dudes who, who, who are reformed, shall we say, domestic abusers. And they all say the same thing. In that hit, in like they, they used to beat up men and then they beat up women. And it feels horrible. It feels different. It doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Uh, when you said the word soft there, that came up a lot. That came up a lot with those guys. Um, it's not something I could ever do myself. Mainly because... Well, to be fair... Um, I could in self-defense. No problem. Like, if a woman came at me with something, I needed a slap. Because she's coming at me with a knife. She's getting slapped. Like, pretty hard. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm getting the life out of her, and I'm, and I'm making sure she's not getting up again to hurt me. You know what I mean? Um, if a woman's going after my kids, or trying to be violent with me, fine. You know, she gets, she gets it back. Uh, I've always said that as well. Every relationship I've ever been in, don't touch me if you don't want to get touched back. You know, I, I'm, I'm completely equal in that. I will always respect your physical boundaries. I will always, I will never touch you. I will never lay a finger on you. So I respect, I expect the same in return. If you don't give me that, then all cards are off the table. You know? Like, all cards are off the table. Don't don't hit me. You know? Uh, don't have a go at me. If I do something that deserves a slap, I will stand there and take it. Do you know what I mean? But if you try and abuse me, then, you know, it's not going to work out well for you. I'm much bigger than you. Don't be silly. Right? Um, no one's ever... You know, I, I've, I've gotten close before. You know? Very close. But no one's ever done it. No, no one's ever gotten me to go there, and, and I, and I never, un unless the situation was really drastic, I never would. I could never see myself doing it. Um, mainly because, you know, as I, I was brought up by my mum, and uh, I didn't really have a father figure growing up. I, I, I collected them and learned at the feet of a lot of dudes when I, when I, when I was growing up. Um, some of them are good, some of them are bad. But um, yeah, I, all I would see is her. Or my daughter, if I was doing that. And I, it, it wouldn't... I couldn't do that, man. It, it just... Unless I was in danger, or somebody was abusing me, and the only way to get them to stop would be to knock them to, senseless to the ground, so I could get out of there. You know what I mean? Then, then that's the case. Um, I think I mentioned this once before, when an ex of mine was, was hitting me, and I, I basically like put a finger in her face and said, that's your last free one. That's your last free one. I'm being, I'm being deadly serious. That's your last free one. I've got a worse temper than you. And I'm much stronger than you. That is your last free hit. The next time you're getting one back. And it'll be much harder. And she didn't, she didn't touch me ever again. Not once. Not once. Right? That was it. It was just over. She was like, okay, I'm fine. And the relationship broke down a couple of weeks after that. Naturally, just went away. You know? Because her only recourse was was done. She couldn't hit me anymore. Because she knew the next time, you know, she, she would have missing teeth. And it was like, yeah, don't touch me. Do not touch me. 
Leave your partner alone. Physically. Alright? There's no excuse. Absolutely not. No excuse. Even girls, if you catch him cheating, leave. Don't physically hit him. You never know. You could pick something up and hit him, or you could hit him just right and he falls over, bangs his head and dies. You don't know. Try and add as much as you can. Never do that to your partner. Alright? Never. Unless you're in serious danger. Um, you know. So I can't condone this, dude. As much as like my, my cathartic side wants to, I can't. You should never do this. But at, at the same time, I can understand. I can give you my understanding, if not my condolence. My, not, not my, you know, my, the, the doff of the cap. I can't do that. But I can give you my understanding. I understand why you did it, you know. Um, in, my, in the divorce, my wife got next to nothing. A very rare case in America. I didn't know this at the time, but especially now, after having learned about the Manosphere, Red Pill Society, and men going their own way, I realise how truly lucky I was through this whole ordeal. And I honestly think it's because I could prove they melted my, in my inheritance item. In the court's eyes, up to the very end, I did everything right before I snapped in the face of her treatment. They attributed it to a brief period of violent psychosis from being pushed to the absolute brink and beyond it. Um, again, so this will be one of the last times I jump in. Um, be very careful, my friend, Dion, in where you place your faith. Okay? I am honoured that you've chosen me, and I'm honoured that you watch the channel. But be very, very careful... The people that you listen to on YouTube. The Red Pill Society, the Manosphere, and Men Go Their Own Way. Um, they're very cathartic to listen to. But I don't think they do very much for, for men going forward. I, I think most of the time, they monetize male resentment. Is what they do. They monetize male resentment. They don't actively help. They make you feel good for a minute or two. They make you hate most women. And and they move on. Right? They don't give you any tools with which to make your life better. I like to think this channel does. Or at least tries to. And there are good people out there. That you can get a lot of good advice from. Uh, Bill Burr was one of them back in the day. Before he went schizo. Um, and... When I say schizo, he, he, he just, he's gone a lot... Uh, He's basically a, a, a um, cringe lefty dad now, which is weird. Um, not that I've, I'm against like left-wing politics, but, you know, ugh, you know, it's, he's typical Californian left, if you know what I mean. So it's hard to listen to after a while. But anyway, um, old Bill Burr stuff, really good advice on there. Um, Jordan Peterson, if you can follow him, not, not a bad guy at all to listen to. Um, you know, guys like that who, who, are, all, who are generally quite good. Are uh, giving you advice. So um, Patrice O'Neill, that, that is a huge guy. It's it's such a horrible thing he's not here anymore. Patrice O'Neill is amazing, dude. If you want to know the ins and outs, you know, take his advice, tone it down to six or seven, and you've basically got your recipe for a successful life, especially with women and as a man as well, and finding your own happiness. Definitely. Um, there are others. So if you want to know more, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll tell you. Uh, but there are others. When I say about Jordan Peterson is, I find his, his arguments hard to follow. Because he just he likes to use very verbose language. And a, lot, and a lot of the times, I'm thinking he's using it for effect rather than actually telling you what he means. you know what I mean? And it just, uh, I don't really get along with, it, with his uh, lecturing style. So I don't think he's very good for most people. But, you know, maybe watch him and see if you think the same way. Do not go with the Andrew Tates. Do not go with... You know, any of these people who tell you women are wrong all the time, don't go down that road, dude. Alright? And don't go your own way. You don't need to. You don't need to. You've got every single tool in your locker to be to be a success with women and in your own life. Don't go your own way. There's no need to. Alright? Maybe for a time be on your own and have fun. You know? But shutting yourself off and pretending to be a lone wolf isn't the way to go. Alright? You just look like a prick. Anyway. My wife returned to Alaska 
and was immediately thrown out by her father because she, and I quote, fucked up the best thing she ever had going, unquote, and was a, and I quote, stupid, useless, good-for-nothing whore, unquote. Whoa. Well, he's got a point. <laughs> he's got a point. Especially if you were paying his medical bills. He was obviously pretty pissed that she threw away the husband that only wanted to help her and her family. I blocked her completely, so I have no idea what ended up happening to her outside of rumours that I hear. She has two kids from different dads and is involved heavily in drugs now. And while that doesn't make me happy, it does feel right. Yeah, okay. I wish the nightmare ended there, but unfortunately we still have the whole fucking pandemic to get through. So let's take a quick tea break. We are through the worst of it. We are near the end of the video, but we're not quite through yet. Okay, cool, cool. I'll have an, a final sip of tea before we carry on. Ah. Now, when you're incarcerated and then tried on assault charges, you either get terminated at that revelation or at the earliest convenience for the company to dump you. And when the world closed, that was the perfect ex excuse for the company to cut me loose. I did wonder about this, actually. I did wonder whether you'd keep your job. I had savings, but not much, after multiple legal battles. The fines I had to pay in settlement and helping her dad with his medical bills, which I still did even after we split until I lost my job. He and the boys shouldn't have to suffer because, of, because she's a fucking clown show. Everything was totally closed for months. I had no income outside of the stimulus checks sprinkled at us. During this period, I sold my Necrons, Tau, and about half of my Orcs to stabilise my finances. Some stores started to kind of open with limited staffing and services. To my surprise, Games Workshop was one such store. I went in and talked to the manager. He looked exhausted and told me about how he was on the only staff member there. Everybody else was laid off or quit when they didn't know uh, when work would return. I showed pictures of the models I'd sold. I'll attach a few to the email for you. And told him when I, uh, I was between work, as I was also displaced by the pandemic. Alright, let's have a look at your models, shall we? Before we do anything else. Uh, that is the back of a tower commander. I don't know why that one's first. Nice cloak, though. Very nice cloak. Oh, yes. Uh, if, you, if you can make me excited for Tau, you're doing a good job. Those are some lovely models. And if you've, if you've stuck with the video this far, you're now getting your reward with some lovely models on the screen. Rebute Gillum in there. I love the sword work. I love the sword work. Brilliant. Nicely done. Oh, yeah, man. Cool, 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 cool. Love it. Carrying on. He offered me the opportunity to work with them at Games Workshop. We did a remote orientation and only one person managed the store at a time to maintain social distance requirements. So we never really got to work together like I was used to in a team, but we kept that store going and actually stayed pretty profitable through the pandemic. I painted a lot of display terrain that Games Workshop wanted to have ready for demos once the store could open properly. I painted display armies and centerpiece models for the display cases. Several of these were the manager's personal models. I could tell he was a player slash salesman first and a painter second. So he was, he was happy to get a makeover on his favourite models. I'll also attach the flame sword I did for old Robbie G. Yeah, we've seen that already. I actually enjoyed my time with Games Workshop. It gave me a place to be. And because we were close to lingering traffic, I only had to deal with people picking up orders or coming in for specific items. Yeah, I'm guessing they didn't keep you on because of your criminal record. Um, they're not allowed to do that with kids around in general. They're not allowed to hire you if you've got a criminal record. Anyway, not for retail anyway. This is when my grandfather, or my grandmother, sorry, had a seizure and we found out about a brain tumour. I promptly moved back north to her house and I've been with her for the past two going on three years. Thankfully, that aspect has gone as well. Or has gone well. <laughs> TLDR, we were able to surgically remo remove the tumour, and there's been no sign of a return. Physical therapy went swimmingly, and her motor control is incredible. 
I recently found some local hobbyists who are, who are all playing with alternative model agnostic systems, considering how poor the area is. People here just can't afford Games Workshop's current pricing. The casual games, we play One Page Rules' as Grim Dark Future, and for our constructed events, we play Mantic Games Firefight. I wouldn't be opposed to playing 40k again if I wasn't priced out by Games Workshop's ridiculous asking prices and removal of the combat patrols. But honestly, I prefer the alternating activation both other systems offer. And Firefight is an absolute blast. There's only like seven or so factions, and all their army rules get updated simultaneously in the same book, because internal balance is very important to the company. I can't recommend it enough. Check out their Strike Force boxes if you want a good price for a fair amount of usable models. P.S. North, I did check to see if Composite Games carries Firefight and Mantic Games is a, as Mantic Games is a UK company. At this time, they do not. I wish they did, so we could plug their store. By all means, plug it away. Their service is great, and yes, they do now ship to the US. Yes, they do. Thank you for telling my story, and thank you for the lovely support of community for listening to it. I promise I'm not a rage-filled meatwad, and I'm actually a relatively adjusted person, even after all of that. I look forward to a future of family and wargaming with the miscellaneous people I meet through life. Many of my games these days are demo games with local college students looking to try tabletop gaming. And whilst I do suggest model agnostic systems over Games Workshop, any effort for tabletop wargaming recruitment is effort well spent. I do encourage my players to try everything that interests them, and I run a free painting class for the, for the public every Thursday. Most of my attendees are students who want to paint their characters or monsters for D&D. But I've started to see a lot of Infinity players. Composite Games also doesn't carry Infinity. Tsk, tsk. Uh, guys, you're listening. You do watch my videos. Get on that shit. Get some of those in stock and we can get them sold. It feels good to see the local scene grow. I am elated that I can participate in that growth as a local member of sorts. I haven't told many here my full story. I don't wish for people to feel sorry for me or to judge me. My life has happened the way it needed, needed to happen in order to teach me the value of being a good man. And how I, as a man, I need to conduct myself in, in the world around me. I have strength, I have cunning, I have the experience now too. It is my responsibility to use these traits to build communities and to teach young men how to be a positive influence on the world around them. I wouldn't trade these experiences for all the money in the world. I'd like to offer one more piece of advice before I go. If you're going to have a woman in your life, be sure to understand female nature before you sign up for any of that shit. I do not hate women, but I do hate how fucking stupid a lot, lot of them tend to be. Cheers. I wish you all a good day and a good life. If you need anything in the community, I'll be on the Discord. Best, Dion. Okay. Um, one glaring issue here. Uh, I, I, I congratulate you for being, you know, a, a good man and, and, and for making sure that you are a good player of the, of the community. And I think you're well on that road. I think you're, you're, you're nearly there. Um, I would tone down the hatred for women, dude. I understand what they did. I understand it's not great, but at the same time, um, hatred you carry around only poisons you. It really does. It, it's literally only your problem. And a guy like you, okay, a guy like you with your work ethic and your responsibility towards family, there are a lot of women out there who would gladly be like, oh, I, I like this guy. Do, don't deprive them of you. All right? Okay? But if they don't know you exist because you're a bitter man and you're getting annoyed and you're... Eventually, this will bleed into other things and you'll start to teach men the wrong lessons of hating women and understanding female nature. Do you know what I mean? That, that's a big warning sign, dude. Don't, don't do that. All right? Uh, the people too. I know I, I, I hate that I have to say that. But women are people too. They're, they're, they're saints and assholes, like the rest of us. Um, you know, there are certain norms and behavioural norms that they will exhibit. Of course, we've talked about a few of them in this video. Um, in terms of, you know, friends being assholes and things like that sometimes. 
But by and large, be very, very, very careful not to paint them all with the same brush. I do that myself. I, I'm very, very, very careful to give both sides of the opinion every, si every time I need to, even if there's a woman in a hobby nightmare or something that I need to chew out and say, what a bitch, do you know what I mean? I'm always doing it with the proviso of, you know, not all women are like this. Don't cut your own nose off to spite your face because eventually this will seep into the rest of your life. You'll become more and more bitter, more and more involuntarily celibate, and you will take out that frustration on other areas of your life. Men going their own way is not a cure for male loneliness and male misery. It isn't, right? Men getting better, putting the big boy pants on, going to work, busting their ass, going to the gym, having fun with their friends, and sleeping with a lot of nice-looking women, that's the way to happiness, all right? Okay? I know that sounded weird, but I'm telling you now. That's the way to happiness. Until you find the one that you want to be with. What you did here, dude, you can tell me that, oh, I did find one. No, you didn't. You went with the first offer here, dude. You even said it in your own hobby nightmare. This is one girlfriend that you met at college that you then allowed into your life at the drop of a hat. Don't do that. Build for yourself a lovely castle of a life that women want to come into. And then, vet the shit out of them. If they're not good enough to be there, get them over the gangplank. Get them out. Because you built a life that's good for you. You built your nice little castle. You got your nice little place. You, you, you got everything going well in your life. And anybody coming in has to add to that. Or they can leave. Or they can be a temporary resident. Who sucks on your dick every once in a while. And then they can leave. Right? But don't let a wife in like that until they've earned the right to be there because you built something yourself that she wants to be a part of. Don't take the first offer every time. You did in this story and it bit you in the ass. That's the mistake you made. All right? You made the mistake of taking the first offer that came with this woman. All right? Because obviously she had fucking issues because you met in a, in a counseling service and not dumping her straight away when you found out what was going on and not seeing her for, for being the, the absolute nut job that she was. Those are the two big mistakes that you made. That's it. And the third one you're starting to make is you're starting to equate all women to your ex. Don't do that. There are some amazing, amazing girls out there who would love a guy like you. Right? Can you imagine the, the, the homely, gorgeous Texan women out there who are around you right now who will, who will hear about you paying for your father-in-law's medical treatment. And they, they're like, wow, that's... Wow. Right? That's some cool-ass shit right there. You're doing some man shit right there. That's incredibly attractive. Don't deny people access to you. Alright? Just be very discerning of your standards. That's all. Build yourself a life that other women want to be a part of. And when they come and want to be a part of it vet them don't be an asshole about it right but get to know them get to know uh, everything that you, ca you can about them and the minute you start seeing red flags leave you're not a bottom feeder that's the issue with most men most men will take the first real offer the first real offer that they get from an attractive woman to marry them they'll take it and they'll end up in situations like this Right? That, that's a male phenomenon. Women don't need to do that. They get offers from all sides all the time. Even average looking women will get offers of dick all the time. Men, not so much. So they tend to jump on the first real offer. Don't. Build yourself a life for yourself that you're happy with, that you're happy to be in on your own with your friends. And then other people will want to come and be a part of that, especially women. Then you vet them as soon as you see a red flag, you leave, you vet them, you make sure that they're the right person for you, and eventually you will find that wife that joins in your journey. That's what I did, and I did. All right? Speaking from experience, I've had some terrible heartbreaks. I've had some awful fall, false dawns that have broken my heart completely, shattered it completely. Right? I've had parts of my life where I've really not liked women. Okay? 
But the one for me only turned up when I stopped doing that. And I realised, look, I need to focus on building my own life. And I did. I built a life that I'm happy with. And all of a sudden, there she is. There she is. Alright? That's what you do. Alright? I love your long time, bros. And I hope you got to the end of this of this hobby nightmare. I will speak to you uh, maybe over the weekend. I'm going to do a painting competition tomorrow with Loken, who is one of our, our good friends over on the Discord. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a Golden Gobbo painting competition if my tooth gets better overnight. I don't want to be sitting here for two, three, four hours talking with this tooth, and I want to give it my best shot. So it's either going to happen tomorrow or in between Christmas and New Year. Um, I've not spoken to him about that yet, so I'll, I'll get back to you. Hopefully it happens tomorrow. If I can take painkillers that are going to get rid of it or whatever, I don't know. But I will try. I love you a long time. I'll speak to you soon, and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.